Hello everybody, this is the Daydreamer with Daydreams and Nightmares, and it is time for me finally to get some of those Q&A uh, questions and answers done, because um, I've been putting it off for one simple reason. During the time that um, I did my giveaway, my pass box that uh, Super Sarah Stuff won, um, was a time when they had changed the algorithms on YouTube. And uh, it seemed that from day to day, at least for a few weeks, everything was glitching. Uh, what day to day uh, comments weren't working, or you couldn't remove comments, or it wasn't keeping track of your uh, your uh, information on there, or any. There were all kinds of problems during that time when they were doing that switch over with uh, changing the way that they were doing uh, dealing with their advertisers and the way that they were. Uh, um, anyway, it's the it's the it was the it's the pain that all of us are currently feeling on YouTube with all those different changes. And anyway, what happened is all the comments that were on the video that I had for that giveaway for the Q and A, that original very first video that I made, all the comments are gone. They're missing. Um, and I was hoping maybe that there was some way for me to retrieve those. Um, and I've gone back through and I've scaled through all the comments and I've gone back and 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 have reached out to YouTube and just they're gone um, and I can't do anything with them. The video is still there, but the comments are all gone. So all those questions that were asked of me in that initial uh, video, I can't answer because I, I, they're, they're not there anymore. Um, the follow-up one I did as a reminder, uh, my last reminder on that uh, giveaway for the past box of the giveaway. Uh, there were um, an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions that were asked, and I'll happily answer all of those. Um, and I'm just going to have to say sorry to all those people that did ask questions in that first video. I know that there were uh, uh, probably as many questions on that video that were asked of me that I can't answer uh, because of that. And it's part of the motivation for the new giveaway that I have. That, that being one of my questions as well, what, you know, just ask me a question, something that you might be interested in, uh, for doing a Q&A for once again, because the, half the questions that were asked of me are gone, out in the ether, disappeared, erased, and I just can't get a hold of them anymore. Anyway, for my questions and answers, um, I'm going to try to do the best I can. Um, first one here is uh, Hermione Granger, and no, not the Hermione Granger, but she, uh, uh, wanted to know what first triggered your interest in Funko Pop collectibles. Um, before I actually started putting content out on, on YouTube, I've been watching YouTube for years, watching people do unboxings and, and do things with collectibles and comics and things like that. And that is, the, the, the people that are out there doing it on YouTube prior to me starting are the ones that got me into it um, and interested in it, and in large part because there were pops, and specifically the Funko Pops, uh, there were pops being made in the um, fandoms that I loved and was interested in, uh, with Marvel and X-Men and with Star Wars and Doctor Who and, and uh, with uh, horror and, and uh, a lot of the, the movies and things that I grew up watching. All of a sudden these things were being made into these little pop finals. And uh, relatively speaking, when it comes to collectibles, uh, a ten dollar pop, which is about the average price, uh, if you go to like Target or Walmart or, or Walgreens, that's about the price you'll pay. Uh, if they become exclusive, then they get a little more expensive. But for ten dollars to have something, a, a little figurine that you can have um, hanging around uh, and reminding you um, of those shows and movies and books and things that you love, um, seems like a reasonable price to. Um, to, to have something like that, where versus, um, I'm a big, huge fan of sideshow collectibles. They do incredible work on their their busts and statues and figures. Uh, incredible details, high quality. That come with high quality prices. You know, they're two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollar figures. Uh, they're well worth it, but definitely not in my price range. So that's why Funko Pops became more appealing as well, because even your even your um, like NECA figures, 
um, are generally more in the 20, 25, 30, 40 dollar range for NECAs, uh, which are, you know, and those are very good quality as well, but once again, you're spending two or three times for one item. So, I don't know, it, it's a trade-off. If you want something that is better quality, more detailed, you're going to spend more money on it, but um, for me, that is, I think, what got me into it. Uh, second question is from Pete WK. What was your first major fandom when you were young that shaped you into what you are today? Uh, and it would probably be my top fandom is Doctor Who. The idea of traveling through time and space. This is a story about a, a guy, a time lord, that can go anywhere in space, anywhere in time, which kind of allows the story to go just about anywhere. Uh, well, it allows it to go anywhere. Um, you could wind up back in, in the, t uh, you know. The story never was limited at all by when, what period he was going to uh, or what part of, in, in a lot of the uh, earlier doctors, except for uh, John Pertwee, who was actually stuck here on Earth as part of his storyline. Um, and they took that from Tom Baker, the next doctor, and I don't think he ever spent much time on Earth at all, because he was all over the place. Um, and getting to see um, historical periods through the perspective of the doctor really, really made it very interesting and made me more interested in history, made me more interested in science as a kid. Uh, and this was a show that was on every Saturday here in the United States on, on the uh, PBS here in the United States, our, our uh, public broadcasting, because um, we didn't, back then there was only, what, four channels. Um, so for me, being able to watch that, and even though it was a, a British show, we could actually watch it over here, and to have that kind of whole perspective on different things and made me interested in science, made me interested in history, um, was a great thing for me as a kid growing up and grew my interest in learning and finding out about things. And it's a show that spanned my entire life, uh, uh, my entire life. Um, and each and every doctor brings something new to it, uh, different personalities and different storylines and things like that. So it's something that I've really enjoyed. Um, question number three, HyperGamer1246 asks, what is your coolest pop and why? Um, <laughs> personally, for me, it'd be any of the Doctor Who ones I have. That's my top fandom. Um, but beyond that, I have, I did show... If you can find a video that I have, uh, I did do a tag video for uh, another YouTuber, uh, um, ICV Torchy, in which I showed my, my top ten favorite and explained why. Um, and the reasons for each of them, I, I'm a big huge Star Wars fan and they just recently put out with the Smuggler's Box that uh, deluxe one uh, with uh, Han Solo on the Tauntaun which is absolutely incredible as far as the detail on that and to have something like that um, as well. I'm a big huge X-Men and Wolverine fan and to get that uh, bo also from the uh, Collector Core box, the one with him on the motorcycle. When they were talking about doing a ride for the X-Men, that's the first thing that came to my mind was having Wolverine on a motorcycle. And so when that's what they actually did, that was awesome. I won a pop from uh, Ethan Finds Out, which is a Jason Voorhees glow in the dark. I'm a big huge fan of, of horror as well, and to be able to get that and add that to my collection as a chase, the very first chase I've ever had in my collection, I was very happy to add that to it. That I think that's a very cool item as well. And uh, it just say check out the other ones that I showed off my top ten. Um, once again, you're going to see, like I said, lots of Star Wars, Doctor Who, Marvel. Um, next question is, what made you join YouTube? And that was asked by uh, Super Sarah Stuff. Oh, no, wait, hold on. There was one more by Heifer Gamer. He wanted to know how old your channel is. Um, I have been uh, doing content and created a channel last September. So I've been doing um, YouTube videos since September of 2016. 
Um, and I was really kind of rough when I first started doing it because it, it was a whole new thing for me to do and it's a, been a process in learning how to do it. And one question came to mind from the ones that disappeared. I remember uh, Big Unks asking me, uh, what has changed with my channel uh, since um, I started on YouTube? And that, that is the thing is, it's just the learning process of learning how to make the videos, how to cut and edit them, how to add music to it, how to uh, add intros and outros and and creating new spaces. And I've, I've done, a, a, most of my videos earlier started in, this is my bedroom up here. Uh, and I, I feel comfortable sitting in a chair here and just talking to people uh, when I'm doing that. Otherwise, I've got a new setup downstairs as well with all the pops and all the collectibles that I have that I've been trying out as a new space as well and I have a uh, some um, a new idea for a banner and actually I want to put it up on the wall down there as well um, not to mention with the uh, new camera that I got that I'm able to get out and be more mobile but it is still a big uh, camera that I'm carrying around unlike uh, uh, somebody's uh, smartphone is a little more unobtrusive when you're walking into a place uh, with with a camera but um, so I've been able to, was able to when I went to the uh, comic-con I was able to do some footage uh, while I was walking around and getting pictures that way uh, being able to interact with more people uh, getting to know people on, on online and sharing uh, things with uh, <laughs> I, where is it, it's this is going to answer Super Sarah's question as well what made you join in YouTube there's not a lot of people in this small town that I live in that are into this kind of these kind of things there's not a comic book shop in this town uh, there is not much in the way of collectibles the turnover of pops at the local Walgreens and at the local uh, uh, Walmart is just terrible um, as far as they have the same pops at the Walgreens that they've had for like the last three four months um, they don't turn over very quickly because there's occasionally some will disappear when they do actually bring some new ones in but um, I like the idea of getting on YouTube and meeting people who have the same interests that I do to be able to meet new people um, outside of this area that have the same passions for horror collectibles comic books movies um, books um, uh, and it just everything along those lines the things that I enjoy um, and to be able to share that with other people um, all over the world now that I've had chances to meet with people that have all those very similar interests uh, that's one of the things that I've liked about uh, being part of YouTube and then being able to actually share the things that I have and have found and been able to do as well uh, next question is from PewDiePie. What is it that you collect the most and what made you collect it? Um, I have been collecting since I was probably about seven or eight uh, comic books. That is the one thing that I probably have the most of in my collection. I know people who have more, but I also don't have an endless budget either. Uh, <laughs> I collect them as I can. I can collect them as I afford, can afford them, and I stopped for a very long time because I couldn't. Um, I have about 3,000 comic books. I at one point probably had twice as many as that um, and sold them off because I've, I've moved around quite a bit over the years and hauling that much. Uh, around wasn't as easy and I needed to pay some bills in between as well so I unloaded some of the books that I have. Um, I love to read, always have since I was a young kid. Um, anything I can get my hands on uh, to read when I was younger including comic books and then back then we had you know The Incredible Hulk was on TV and Wonder Woman was on TV and Six Million Dollar Man and even Spider-Man was on TV and you had your uh, cartoons with them as well so having a, 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 a something that I could read that had those characters in them as well made it really fun and interesting as well uh, let's see next question is from Simeon's Reviews I'm gonna have to make a video on this one alone I, I kind of want a visual to go with this he's asking what kind of music do you listen to genre um, I listen to everything to be quite honest uh, 
I, if it moves me, if it makes me uh, happy, if it makes my feet tap, uh, if I enjoy listening to it, but it can vary from day to day what it is I like to listen to. I have uh, your classic rock, rock, um, heavy metal, um, I have uh, blues, jazz, um, I have uh, instrumental, I have uh, club music, I have uh, electronica, I have... Um, trying to think what else is in their country I have I just my my music collection and part of the reason why I have such a, a big one everybody everybody these days doesn't buy uh, CDs anymore before that it was cassettes and I actually believe that now I still have some cassettes around uh, and, and LPs and which is getting a resurgence resurgence now too of having of re having records but in the uh, 80s and 90s when I was in college I was a DJ and for a time while I was at college, I actually worked at the uh, jazz radio station as well and learned to appreciate jazz and blues more than I did because uh, while I was going to school, one of the things I was studying was communications. And one of the classes I took that put me into the radio station there at the college uh, let me get exposed to that kind of music as well so I got a better appreciation of jazz and blues uh, while I was there at school as well. But I also worked as a DJ, uh, going out to uh, weddings and parties and proms and all, all of that. So all the music that was popular then um, that I was playing and collecting and having requested of me, um, I would carry around big, big huge uh, bins and totes full of CDs and music. So I have thousands of CDs. Uh, these days it's all downloads, but I, like I said, I still have thousands of CDs uh, for the music that I, I listen to and have listened to over the years. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a difficult one to answer uh, it, it, in my in my respect, because I, I just it's across the board as far as music is concerned. Simply incredible podcast has the next question: How did you come up with your YouTube channel? Um, I've always considered myself a dreamer. Um, my handles throughout the years on YouTube have been a dreamer, dreamer. Um, I like the idea of and I've said this with one of my favorite characters in, in comic books. He is uh, Morpheus or Dream, Sandman. The idea of people's dreams and subconscious being the sources of stories and art and, and uh, the, the imaginations of, of people and being able to go into their dreams and, and to be a dream walker and, and to kind of see into people's you know what the it, that's the beautiful thing about comic books and art and movies and books you have through those mediums kind of an insight into somebody else's thoughts and dreams um, and that's one of the things that has always intrigued me um, throughout the years um, and even even uh, I, one of my favorite quotes that I put on no star reviews is those who dream by day are cognizant of many things that escape those that only dream by night, uh, coming from Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and the thing is, is, as Edgar Allan Poe himself will point out, there is a flip side to dreaming as well, and there are those things that go bump in the night and is, that hide in the dark and scare us and, and build on our fears as well, and that is the whole premise of the entire scope of uh, horror and so there is a yin and a yang to life as well the both the good and the bad so the idea of there being daydreams there can also be nightmares uh, and that's kind of where my YouTube channel name was born out of is that 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 yin and yang of, of life uh, and so uh, yeah I hope that answers the question um, let's see Oblivion. Last question here is: Since I am a Doctor Who fan, if I had my your own TARDIS, or if you had your own TARDIS, when and where would you first visit? And also, who would you uh, pick? One famous person to be your companion. Um, speaking of Doctor Who and companions, I just recently went to uh, Comic Con. If you haven't seen those videos, I know a lot of people have. So I'm going to be a little biased here. Um, I'm going to go with John Berriman as my famous uh, 
person who's going to join me as a companion, since he's already had practice as, an, as a companion, but I think he would be an awesome person to hang out with and, and travel through time, because he seems like he would be a kind of fun, lighthearted uh, person to hang out with and to enjoy that adventure with. Uh, as as an actor and as a person, not not necessarily as Jack uh, Captain Jack himself, although it seems like he has a lot of the same personality and and funniness and joy of life uh, that Captain Jack does have when I did have a chance to meet him. So that's going to be my choice, and that's a little bit uh, uh, biased in the fact that uh, I, it, it's a recent experience and opportunity to meet him. Uh, the answer to the other question, or part of the question, and when and where. Um, I'm thinking probably Victorian era, turn of the century, 19, or sorry, 1880s, uh, a bit Victorian era, uh, London. Um, I'm fascinated by that period of time, um, and especially in London at that period of time, uh, seems to be kind of the center of, see, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated by the idea of steampunk and that 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 change and shift in in the idea of creating mechanical objects uh that to help is that's that's at that point in time in history when we get into where where science and and machinery and stuff start affecting the world around us um and i think that would be fascinating to see um so yeah, that would probably be the point in time that I'd like to try to visit. I'm hoping this isn't too long. Um, it probably would have been a whole lot longer had I had double the questions, and I probably would have had to have break, broken this up. But I hope that answers everybody's questions, kind of gives you an insight into me. Um, and maybe you have some more questions you want to ask. Once again, I am doing a giveaway, and one of the uh, things is I'm asking for some more questions since I lost so many questions. But for those that are watching, thank you for watching. If you like this, hit like. Subscribe if you want to watch more. And feel free to leave any comments or feedback down below. Thank you.